Okay, today is September the 8th, 2017. It's about 9.30 a.m. here on the West Coast, and we're watching uh, Hurricane Irma, which is uh, producing 150 mile per hour winds. It's now a Category 4 storm. And we can see some transmitter manipulation on this storm here in the uh, visible light map. Uh, right here on the uh, northwest side of the storm, we can see uh, several areas that are being targeted with microwave. Let's go ahead and scroll through the loop here. Frame by frame, we can see this area right here. All these uh, little pock marks are where the transmitter is hitting and superheating the bands of that storm. As we uh, advance to the next frame, we can see that these will expand out. And also, they've hit the center of this uh, storm, too. Watch the uh, center. Let's go back one frame. And that is disrupting the convective process right there in the eye wall. You can see that expand out. Notice up here the same thing is happening. The expansion. Large crater. And of course, this causes a blast pattern. Let's run it at a regular speed. And we can see the, uh, the blast pattern here that results from that uh, superheating process. And notice also up here. This one particular area is, is a little better, showing the uh, expanding crater, as well as that eye wall. But up here, if we keep an eye on that area, you can see the uh, big craters that form and expand after that area has been superheated. And notice the, uh, the eye wall, what happens to the eye wall after that area is uh, superheated. It actually disrupts and temporarily uh, disorganizes the, the uh, center of that storm, which is interesting. That kind of proves the point that uh, we're seeing some manipulation here on this storm, finally. It's uh, actually too little too late, I think, because uh, this storm is headed right for uh, Florida. Let's look at the uh, rainbow map. And we can see what happens right up here. We have a lot of uh, got a blast pattern around the outside edge. We see the eye wall is uh, disrupted there. We can see that yellow after the storm is hit. But once again, they're not using uh, sufficient power, so this storm is being allowed to deliberately uh, plow right towards. Uh, Florida. Let's look at the uh, notice the disruption up here in this quadrant as well after the fact. We see the blast pattern right right down here, not over here. These the pressure waves move out. All right, now here's the Hurricane Center map. Right now we've got Irma which is actually the same, Jose right here is producing the same wind speed, 150 mile per hour winds, uh, category four, central pressure of 942 millibar moving west northwest at 18 miles per hour. Now look at Irma right here, same, pretty much the same stats, except for the central pressure is quite a bit lower, uh, moving west northwest at 14. And then Katya over here is actually strengthened to uh, category uh, two status with 100 mile per hour winds, uh, 975 millibar core pressure, central pressure, and moving west southwest at five miles per hour. So that is moving over land now. It looks like it's going to be moving over uh, Mexico here pretty soon.
But looking at the uh, forecast, it looks like this storm is going to be run right up the center of Florida, either that or on the on the uh, Gulf side. All right, well, let's take a look at some of these other maps. We have the West Atlantic water vapor loop. We can see all three storms here. And there is an area of high pressure in this area. So as this storm is stalled pretty much in place, Katya over here, Irma will be uh, steered right up in the Florida. And we see very little rotation uh, right in this area as this high pressure is forcing the storm to move in a northerly direction. Now here in the uh, rainbow map, we can see the uh, disruption here in the uh, bands. This is the area that was targeted. Here in the uh, visible light map, we can see those uh, dimple marks, those pock marks where that transmitter is targeting the storm. Now here in the eastern water vapor loop, eastern U.S. water vapor loop, we can see the uh, storm right down here. This is actually moving due west during this uh, loop right here. Let's go back to the uh, floaters map once again and put the grid on. And you can see that this is moving more westerly than it is uh, in a west-northwest pattern, at least for the few frames that we're seeing here. So, uh, but it is forecast to turn to the north, but right here we just, we see that, uh, that latitude 22 degree north, right here, 22 degrees north, and that is where this storm is moving pretty much right along that line. All right. Back to the uh, eastern water vapor loop, the eastern U.S. water vapor loop, we see the uh, tail of uh, Katya moving right up, up into the Atlantic. Once uh, Irma moves further north, if it does, uh, this also could be allowed to move right back into the Gulf of Mexico. It may allow these two storms to merge. Who knows? I mean, these guys are crazy that are doing this. We've been watching for two and a half years uh, making videos showing how these storms have been steered back out to sea. If we uh, recall, uh, the year after uh, Katrina hit uh, New Orleans, the following year, there was a area of parked high pressure right off of the east side of Florida right here that sat parked for the entire uh, season, the entire hurricane season. And to this day, uh, meteorologists cannot explain how that happened. So there was an area of high pressure just parked right off of Florida, and that deflected all of the uh, hurricane activity away from the U.S. back out to the North Atlantic. So in the last uh, three weeks, we've seen two major hurricanes suddenly hit the U.S. after 12 years of uh, no hurricane activity. So what is the point that they're making here? Is it the is it that uh, they don't want to be, their cover is blown and they have to prove that, uh, make a point that weather is still random and chaotic and or the global uh, warming narrative and the climate change narrative that will allowing, uh, you know, these hurricanes to move in, that will then bolster the uh, climate change narrative we're hearing on mainstream media. Just a thought. Okay, here's the uh, rainbow map. We see the high pressure between these two systems. So, a lot of evaporation in this area over that period of time in the loop. We saw that. 
uh, let's see, let's take a look here at the uh, SSEC water vapor map. And we can see the uh, disruption towards the end of that loop. They're targeting this area right up here, this northwest quadrant of the storm. We can see the disorganization towards the end of that loop right there towards the end. This is a 40 image loop. And each, uh, each image is uh, taken at a one half hour interval. <clears throat> so this is around a 20 hour loop that we're watching here, 20 hours. If we go back to the floaters map now and watch the sequence, we can see that all that activity is had, uh, occurring towards the end of the loop. Right there. Right over here. So the superheating process disrupts the uh, the uh, convective process in the hurricane. The eye wall is uh, disturbed. We can see some elongation of that eye wall. It looks like a football there. but uh, it will eventually rebuild. We hit the center of that storm. Let's go back to the other map here, the floaters once again. And they do hit the center of that storm. Here in the rainbow map, we can see that. So some effort is being made, obviously, to weaken the storm and that's what has happened we're down at 150 mile per hour winds and we'll keep a close eye on this and uh, do another update here real soon okay that's it